pleasant good morning to you all and i wish for you a happy mother's day i want to use this opportunity to extend mother's day greetings to all mothers spiritual mothers and significant others i want to thank you for the opportunity to share with you on this very special day for you and today i want to look at the process of weaning and use it to show the significant parallel between spiritual weaning and its contribution towards a successful spiritual journey. So please pray with me. Our Heavenly Father, today we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your love. We thank you, Lord, for this opportunity that has brought us together as mothers in the house, your house today. So Father, we bless you. We thank you, Lord, for your word. We know, Lord, that the entrance of your word brings forth light. We know that your word will not return to you void, but it shall accomplish everything you set it out to accomplish. So Father, we thank you for this word. And Father, we pray that your word will bring forth fruit, much fruit, much, much fruit, a hundredfold fruit in the hearts and lives of your people today. We give you all the thanks and all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. So today, as I said, I want to share with you on the process of weaning and what, how that translates to what we want to be in terms of successful in our painting skills for our children. So at every stage of our journey as mothers, mothers-in-law, mothers-in-waiting, uh, grandmothers, you know, there are some truths that we need to understand and appreciate. So, we have a specific role, a specific spiritual role to fulfill. Our role shifts at every stage, and it is critical for the success of our parenting that we understand and appreciate and abide by the process at each stage. Before we examine these stages, however, it needs to be clearly stated that my springboard today is that our children do not belong to us. And at some point, the Lord, who has allowed us to be a steward of them, he will return for them. The successful application of what you will hear today is hinged on your sincere acceptance of this principle. When we are aware of the various stages of our spiritual role as mothers, mothers-in-law, grandmothers, we will be more intentional in fulfilling that role as we will be more keenly aware of the time-sensitive nature of each stage. Secondly, our focus will become sharpened and we will cast our cares on the Lord for the areas that we should have already released. For example, when we get to that time when we become a mother-in-law and we understand our spiritual role as a mother-in-law, we will not be confused or distracted when we are called upon in our capacity as birth mother to intervene in the marital situations of our children. We will cast those cares to the Lord. For the time that we have today, I will highlight each stage as well as a mother who represented that stage. But I want to spend a little more time gleaning some important applications from the birth mother stage. So the first stage we want to look at is a mother in waiting. And I call that the fill up stage. It is where you're working on your faith. You are probably not yet married or married and not yet have children. At this point, your spiritual role is to wait before the Lord. This is a period of transition. In this season, you sit at the Lord's feet and you receive his instruction. This is where you fill up to the overflow so that out of your belly will flow rivers of living water. You ensure that you instruct yourself in godly living. Ensure that you are walking in that way. Train yourself to be godly so that you can train your children in the godly way that they should go. As Psalm 32 verse 8 says, allow the Lord to instruct you and teach you in the way that you should go. Allow him to guide you with his eye. In this way, your training of your children will flow out of this wellspring of living water that has been established in your life. Rachel, the patriarch Jacob's wife, was barren. She couldn't have any children. And she took it out, she took out her frustration on her husband, who quite rightly reminded her that he was not responsible for her barrenness. Instead of walking by faith, she tried a substitute and had her husband have children with her maid. 
Rachel also used superstition in an attempt to have a child, but that did not work. She had to come to a place where she accepted that it is the Lord who opens up wombs and all she had to do was to hope in God. Two years later, God remembered Rachel, answered her prayer and opened her womb. Rachel's faith had to come to an understanding that substitution and superstition cannot be a part of her walk with the Lord. Had she succeeded with these methods, this would have been the fountain from which her instructions to her children would have flowed. All of your efforts will fail until you rely totally on the Lord. So the mother in waiting stage is a time in which you wait on the Lord and allow him to train you in godliness. This then prepares you for the next stage of the journey, which is the mother in the, the birth mother stage. So the mother in waiting is a fill up stage. And at this stage now, the birth mother, it is a foundation stage for your child. As a mother who gave birth, your spiritual responsibility is to wean your child. This weaning process transitions them into a season of formalized instruction. You lay the very significant foundation upon which your child will receive instruction. Hannah, who had no children, made a vow to the Lord that if he remembered her and gave her a boy child, she would give him back to the Lord. Eventually, Hannah had a son and she called his name Samuel, which means because I have asked him of the Lord. The next year, Elkanah, Hannah's husband, went on their annual trip to the tabernacle, but without Hannah, because she said to her husband, you know, wait until the baby is weaned, and then I will take him to the tabernacle, and I will leave him there, 1 Samuel 1, 22. Elkanah told her to stay at home. We quite understand that in this context today. Stay at home until she has weaned Samuel. So she stayed at home and nursed him until she had weaned him. Now take note here that a child was weaned between the ages of three to five years. Hannah made good her promise. And when Samuel was weaned, she took him to Eli, the priest, and left him in the service of the Lord. Hannah, who spent the time as a mother in waiting, getting revelation of who God is, was able to pour these spiritual truths into Samuel, the future successful prophet in Israel. Weaning is a process of gradually reducing your baby's dependence on breast milk and introducing complementary foods and drinks until breast milk is completely replaced by these foods and drinks. What the child receives at this stage is critical for what is to come. The next stage builds on what has been deposited in the weaning stage. The process of weaning is vital to establishing healthy eating habits and limiting fussy eating. In a spiritual sense, we also ought to be a source of spiritual truths for our children. We must intentionally train them up in spiritual truths. As they receive milk from the breast, they must also receive the milk of the word from our lips. The writer of 1 Corinthians and Hebrews compare the intake of milk with the intake of the word of God. The Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians 3.2 told some believers that he had to feed them with milk and not with solid food because they couldn't digest anything stronger. And even now, they still had to be fed on milk. The writer in Hebrews 5.13 compared the intake of milk to the level of spiritual maturity in the word. The believers who were saved for a long time were chided for being like babies who could drink only milk and were not old enough for solid food. And when a person is still living on milk, it shows he isn't very far along in the Christian life and doesn't know much about the difference between right and wrong. He is still a baby Christian. So mothers, while we have the opportunity, invest in the spiritual health of your child. Buy resources that will allow the word of God to be played in their hearing. Play worship songs, not nursery rhymes and lullabies in their presence. Read the word of God daily to them. Teach them Bible verses. As soon as my children are able to read, the first book that I purchased for them was a Bible. This is the only solid foundation that can help our children survive in this world today. So as mothers, 
Our claim to fame is a time in which we will intentionally nurture our children in spiritual matters. And we will see where that comes in later on. This is foundational and everything in their life will be built on this foundation. The Psalmist David in Psalm 131 2 compares the state of quietness before the Lord with a weaned child with its mother. That is a child of four or five who walks trustingly beside his mother. Why is this? In the midst of changing diets in the weaning process, changing tastes, changing textures, bodily reactions to new foods, the mother is a stabilizing constant who guides the child through these waters of uncertainty. She determines the readiness of her child for weaning, the suitability of the foods to be used. She encourages a child through the process and she tailor makes the diet to suit the child's constitution, having been determined by any previous allergic reactions. So the process also teaches a child that he can depend on this source of nourishment. Now, if this process is coupled with spiritual nurturing, valuable lessons will be taught. The child will look to and trust his mother for spiritual advice and counsel. We are instructed in Deuteronomy 6, 79 to think constantly about the commandments of the Lord. We are to then teach them to our children, talk about them when we are at home, when we're out for a walk, at bedtime and the first thing in the morning. Now we are having the opportunity to teach them at home because we are there with them. Let us use this opportunity to really get into the word of God with them. Build on that foundation. A child must be so spiritually weaned that when his formal education begins, his analogies, his application and illustrations will be understood in the framework of the word of God. What happens, however, in most cases is that because that foundation was not laid, spiritual foundation was not laid, our children try to fit what they learn about God into the framework of the secular school education because that is a foundation that is being laid in their lives. The Lord designed a child between one to five to trustingly receive without question. Whoever you use to substitute this critical process will reproduce themselves and their value system in that child. Mothers usually return to work shortly after the birth of their young child and leave the child in the care of a perfect stranger at a daycare. The child is designed to receive everything that is there to be offered and will take it all in. Codes are being written, foundations are being laid. I understand that the funds are needed to sustain the home, but if we think of the end product, what is more important, a higher standard of living or a child who has been trained by his mother in kingdom values, hence laying foundation for life. There is a design to accomplish spiritually healthy, well-rounded children, but we have to submit to the plan of the designer. Let me encourage you today, we never lose when we give to God. Hannah gave her one son Samuel to the Lord, and in return, the Lord blessed her with three sons and two daughters, five children, Grace. Abraham gave his one son, Isaac, to the Lord, and he became the father of nations. Another critical insight into weaning is that it comes to an end. Yes, the process comes to an end. Sarah, in her old age, received Isaac, the son of promise, and she nursed him until he was weaned. On the day that Isaac was weaned, Abraham held a great feast. There is some indication that Isaac was about five years of age, and at this time, he was turned over to his father for training, at which time his education began. The process of weaning starts with the first mouthful of food and ends with the last feed of breast milk. So there's a defined period of time to guide the child through this process. There is a start time and an end time. We relish the start, but we balk at the thought that there will be an end. I remind you, as stewards, we understand that the master will one day return. I can't say what will happen in your specific case, but in my case, for both of our children, the Lord required them when they were 18 years of age. I remember when he, quote unquote, returned from Matthew, he said, the Lord said that he was pleased with how he was raised. It wasn't that we were perfect parents, far from it, 
But the Lord said, he knows me and he recognizes my voice. Matthew recognized the voice of his father, his heavenly father. So after this, I quickly completed the process by shifting my son's focus away from us as his providers to his heavenly father as his sole provider. Removed ourselves out of the picture. Yes, we are still parents, but the focus needs to be shifted. The concept of weaning someone is to gradually eliminate someone's dependence from something. It is a period that transitions you, prepares you for a new season to come. There comes a time when the eaglet has to be pushed out of the nest and adulthood will come whether or not your child is properly weaned. When a mother understands her spiritual role, she will relinquish her hold on her child and release him or her to further spiritual development. Your influence will always be there. They will trust your judgment in spiritual matters. So let us, like Hannah, release our children after they have been weaned. It releases them to the next level of their spiritual journey with God, their father. So many times as mothers, we are a hindrance to what God wants to do in their lives. We use our own spiritual experiences as a gauge for what God is doing in their lives. Let's not do that. They have their own unique experiences with the Lord. Give the Lord room and allow him to do what he wants to do in their lives. He wants more for them than you do what's best for them. It was a weaned Samuel who the Lord used to send the message to Eli, the priest. It was a weaned Isaac, who the Lord used to exhibit his father Abraham's faith. So we have looked at the mother in waiting, a time in which you fill up, you fill up with the Lord. We have looked at the birth mother, where your spiritual role is to lay the foundation. That is your role, to lay the foundation for your child, a spiritual foundation. Another stage, is that of mother-in-law. And those of us who are blessed to go to that stage, let us understand that this is a framework stage. In this period of transition, you model before this new couple what it means for them to model Christ before their children. You are providing the framework for their parenting season to come. You fitly frame them for the future. This is not the time to be teaching spiritual truths. That season is over. If the spiritual foundation was not laid prior, then it means that another foundation has already been laid. At this stage, as mother-in-law, in this framework stage, you have gained a child. Introduce your faith, your testimony, and your walk in Christ. Because of what you have poured into your own child, your walk will confirm what your child is living before his or her spouse. Naomi modeled this before her daughters-in-law, Ruth and Orpah and they came to faith in God. The next spiritual role is that of grandmother. This is the finished stage. This is a stage of legacy. Your primary spiritual role is not to teach. That is now the responsibility of the birth mother, to wean and to lay a foundation for them. That is the role of the birth mother. This is not your role at this time. This is not your role at all. This is the role of the mother who is now weaning their child, going through that process that you went through. So give them an opportunity to do this. Give them an opportunity to do this in the lives of their children. Amen? This is what you are, you prepare them for. And this is what you have to entrust and allow the Lord to really use them in this way. And so... We looked right now, we have looked at the, the first stage, which was the mother-in-waiting stage. And that is where you fill up. This is where you spend time before the Lord to fill up before him. Amen? And then after that, you have the birth mother stage. This is where you lay the foundation for your child. It's a very critical stage. And then we come to the mother-in-law stage. This is where the framework, the structure is built. This is where the structure is laid up. And the grandmother stage, it's a very critical stage. And we have to understand that we are not to interfere with the teaching process that the birth mother has to do at this point. This stage 
shows the finished product for the crowd of witnesses to attest to your work. Transition for your grandchildren. Paul attested to the faith that Lois, Timothy's grandmother had, a faith that dwelt in Lois. That was what the witness had. Naomi, the neighbors attested to the faith that she had. We might not all be birth mothers, but we can be mothers in the faith. And I call this a fortification stage, Titus 2 verse 4. Your primary spiritual role is to hear encourage the younger women to love their husbands and children. In spite of what they say, their struggles, their concerns, your role is to encourage them to love their husbands. Your role is to teach them to love their husbands. So we see that at every stage of our journey as mothers, mothers-in-law, grandmothers, mothers-in-waiting, we have a specific spiritual role to fulfill. I've highlighted how the role shifts at every stage, and it is critical for the success of our parenting that we understand, appreciate, and abide by the process at each stage. When we apply the information that you have received today concerning the various stages of our spiritual role, we'll be more intentional, as we are now keenly aware that there's going to be an end point for the stage that you're currently in. And your focus will be crystal clear as you cast your cares on the Lord for the errors that you should have released to him. So we give God thanks that he has given us the privilege and allowed us to be a mother, a mother-in-law, a grandmother, a mother of the faith, whatever it is, understand our role, tune into the Lord and understand what that role is so that we can become effective, effective mothers today. Thank you. Lord, we thank you for this word that you have given to us. We bless this word. I bless the mothers and I pray in the name of Jesus that you'll help them to come into a keener understanding of what their role is as we help our children transition, as we help to lay the foundation for children so that they can become successful at whatever they put their hands to because of the strong spiritual foundation that we have laid in their lives. Father, we love you. We bless you. And we give you all the thanks and give you all the praise in your precious and holy name. Amen. God bless all and thank you so much for listening today.